Washington, D.C. The Federal Reserve is expected to announce a modest half-point increase in its benchmark rate on Wednesday, a first step toward reducing its efforts to fight inflation, following four straight three-quarter point increases. At the same time, the Fed is anticipated to indicate that it intends to raise rates more frequently than previously anticipated in an effort to combat the biggest inflation wave in 40 years. And according to the majority of analysts, Chair Jerome Powell will emphasize that even when the hikes stop, the Fed is likely to maintain its benchmark rate at its highest level for the remainder of next year. With the six rate increases the Fed has already implemented this year, its benchmark short-term rate is now at its highest point in 15 years, ranging from 3.75% to 4%. In total, the increases have resulted in significantly higher borrowing costs for families and businesses, affecting everything from mortgages to vehicle and business loans. There are growing concerns that the Fed's aggressive rate increases to combat inflation would lead to a recession the following year. Powell and other Fed officials have emphasized that they expect to keep rates at their highest levels for a prolonged length of time despite the fact that price increases are still uncomfortably high, 7.1% inflation in November compared to a year earlier. According to Matthew Lazzetti, an economist at Deutsche Bank and a former research analyst at the Fed, the data, Tuesday, kind of conforms with our notion that the Fed will downshift more in February. Downshifting helps to maximize their odds of a soft landing, in which the Fed's rate hikes would moderate inflation, restrict growth, and prevent the economy from entering a recession. The Fed's rate-setting committee members will also revise their predictions for interest rates and other economic indicators for 2023 and beyond on Wednesday. Most analysts predict that, in addition to their September projection of 4.5% to 4.75%, they will pencil in a peak range of at least 4.75% to 5%, or even 5% to 5.25%. Additionally, according to Fed policymakers, rates should reach restrictive levels to reduce hiring and growth and lower inflation to their 2% annual target. One of the seven members of the Fed's Board of Governors, Lisa Cook, remarked, we will only discover what policy rate is suitably restrictive over time by watching how the economy evolves. Given the upcoming tightening, I am aware that monetary policy has a considerable lag time. To better grasp the future course of inflation, Powell stated in remarks made late last month that he was monitoring pricing developments in three main categories, services excluding housing, such as vehicle insurance, veterinary care, and education, as well as goods, with the exception of fluctuating food and energy prices. Housing costs include rents and the cost of owning a home. In his speech, Powell stated that although most services had seen an increase in inflation, there had been some progress in reducing prices for products and housing. Some of those patterns continued into the statistics from the previous month, with goods prices, excluding food and energy, dropping 0.5% from October to November for the second consecutive month. Powell has therefore concentrated mostly on services, which he claimed are likely to remain stubbornly expensive. That's in part due to the fact that sudden salary increases are increasingly important in driving up inflation. Businesses that provide services, like hotels and restaurants, require a lot of labor. Additionally, pricing pressures continue to increase in that sector of the economy as typical earnings grow quickly, at a rate of 5% to 6% annually. Powell has even set a wage goal, he believes that 2% inflation and annual pay growth of roughly 3.5% are compatible. Currently, the average wage is increasing by 5% to 6% annually. The Fed's policymakers predicted that the jobless rate would increase to 4.4% from its current 3.7% three months ago. By the end of 2023, the policymakers might predict a higher unemployment rate on Wednesday. If true, that would imply that they anticipate a recession and more layoffs.